Kapuran. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our session on orchestrating forwarding graphs using Tacker, Neutron, and Open Daylight. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Sripriya Sitaram from Brocade. Uh, today I'm filling in for uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy here, who could, who could not make it to the summit this time. Right. Hello, I'm Brady Johnson. I uh, work at Ericsson, um, working at Open Daylight SFC, also on OP and a VSFC. My name's Louis Free. I work for Huawei. Uh, are you on? Am I on? I think I am. Am I on? Yeah, it's Louis Fari working at Huawei, and I'm going to be talking about the Neutron Networking SFC. You're saying you're not on. All right, let's get started. Um, on the agenda items today, we are first quickly going, uh, going to quickly go through some of the basic service staying concepts. We are then going to look into the Tosca data model, how we can use the Tosca data model to describe some of the SFC constructs, and then use the Tosca uh, template itself to onboard and deploy a forwarding graph using Tacker as an NFE orchestrator. Lewis is going to talk more on the Neutron Networking SFC project. And finally, Brady is going to talk more on the Open Daylight SFC and the IETF SFC information. And finally, we will uh, wrap the session with a demo and take some questions at the end of the session. So what is service function chaining? So given a source and a destination VM on the two hosts, now here the source and the destination VM are connected directly using the OVS. Now, when we bring in a third uh, VM uh, on a different host, let's say it is hosting some network function such as firewall, and then when we use the VNF or the uh, VM itself to connect between the source and the destination, for some NFP use cases, we want to classify and steer the traffic through this VNF and then forward it to the destination. This is called as service function chaining in very basic terms. So of course, the forwarding graph itself can be very complex. Here, you're just seeing a single VNF that is stitched together with the source and the destination. A forwarding graph can contain more than one VNF. The VNFs itself can span across multiple hosts. And uh, the VNFs themselves can be part of uh, multiple forwarding, multiple service function chain. And uh, finally, the chain can have multiple classifiers based on different classification requirements. Here we have used uh, Etsy terminologies to represent the network function. We call it, uh, uh, the Etsy calls it as a VNF. And the actual chain that gets deployed between the source and the destination is called as a VNF forwarding graph. We can learn more about this components when we talk about the Tosca forwarding graph descriptor. So how do we model this forwarding graphs? So the forwarding graph itself has complex requirements. There are different classification requirements and there are different path that needs to be created in order to deploy the service function chain. So how do we model this forwarding graphs using the Tosca data model? So there are three main elements to a forwarding graph, as defined by the Etsy, uh, to uh, create or to represent a service function chain. The first one is the VNF forwarding graph. It basically defines how certain uh, traffic uh, meeting certain criteria needs to be steered through a set of uh, network functions in a given network uh, connectivity topology. The second one is the forwarding graph descriptor. This is the main Tosca template uh, that is used to represent the SFC policies and to represent the networking forwarding graph itself in the template. And finally, we have the forwarding path. So the forwarding path is an ordered list of connection points belonging to the VNFs that are part of the outer forwarding graph. A forwarding graph can have more than one uh, forwarding path, and uh, that is used to describe the service function chain. So here, as in the last slide, we understood some of the components that are part of the forwarding graph. Here we see the Tosca forwarding graph descriptor, uh, which is basically used to represent the service function chain using some of the components, uh, which we just uh, saw in the previous slide. In, the, in this network topology, there is VNF1, VNF2, and VNF3 that are interconnected using the virtual links. And there are three uh, traffic that is flowing in into the service function chain. So there is the green and the blue uh, 
lines which represent the first forwarding graph, they basically represent two forwarding paths. The first uh, forwarding path goes through VNF1, VNF2, and VNF3. And then there is a second forwarding path which basically just goes through VNF1 and VNF3. And then we represent a, seven, a second forwarding graph which we call it here as a VNF of G2, which uh, just has one forwarding path. And this goes through the VNF1 and VNF3. Here we can see that uh, we can represent different kinds of forwarding graph. Uh, using the Tosca descriptor uh, based on some of the uh, forwarding graph components. Now, how do we describe this SFC policies in the Tosca template? The two main uh, uh, node types what we use in describing the uh, SFC is the groups and the forwarding path uh, node type. The, if, you, if you zoom in on the forwarding graph, uh, forwarding group node type itself, it contains the metadata information which you want to uh, represent for the forwarding graph. And it also includes information such as the connection points, uh, the constituent VNFs that are going to be part of the service function chain. And finally, it has the members, which is an important piece of this forwarding group, uh, a node type, which uh, here it is basically having one forwarding path, which is called as a forwarding path one. And when you look into the forwarding path one node type itself, it contains the actual SFC information here, uh, rep represented using the policy key. The policy key has the criteria uh, section, which basically defines the matching criteria that needs to be applied on the ingress traffic. We can include many ACL match, uh, matching criteria. I think uh, right now the networking SFC project uh, supports around eight ACL ma match criteria, but you can we can add more number of uh, any number of uh, match criteria types into this section and uh, uh, ask that the ingress traffic be classified based on this uh, requirements. And then we have the path section, which uh, basically represents the actual connection points that are going to be stitched together to create the service function chain. Uh, they are represented as an ordered set of forwarder capability information. Here we have two forwarders. Basically, the chain is created using the two VNLs, which has the exposed capabilities using CP124 and CP224, which are basically the two connection points represented by the two VNFs. So now that we have seen the forwarding graph descriptor, so the YAML template uh, where we have defined the SFC policies, now here is the end-to-end -end workflow where all the three projects are in action to create and deploy the forwarding graph. So the user first creates and onboards the forwarding graph template in Tacker using the NFE orchestrator component. So once the template is onboarded, uh, the user can go ahead and deploy the forwarding graph uh, within Tacker. So the forwarding graph is first validated uh, to uh, see that the node types are matched with the Tosca NFE profile. The node types are belonging to the uh, forwarding group type and to the forwarding path uh, node type. Once the validation is done, uh, the VNFs, which are represented as abstract types within the template, are then mapped to the actual VNF instances. This information is then uh, internally queried, and the corresponding ports associated, uh, represented as capabilities for the VNF. The port ID information is also queried, and the request body is built. Uh, from Tacker NFE orchestrator and sent to the sent downstream to the neutron networking SFC component. The networking SFC component further sends the request to the backend driver. So the networking SFC component has a pluggable backend driver where it can use any uh, driver as a backend. Here we are using the open daylight as a backend component for networking SFC. So this request is then sent to the ODL SFC driver, which basically acts as a shim layer between Neutron and the open daylight itself. Does the uh, calls or the rest comp calls for the Neutron not bound residing in the open daylight? Daylight. The open daylight uh, SFC and network components may do the job of translating this request and creating the actual service function chain and also the forwarder functions. The SFC component is uh, responsible for creating the service function forwarder uh, on the VNF. And then we have the network uh, component, which goes ahead and creates the tunnel for the end-to-end -end, uh, deployment of the service function chain. So here is the high-level overview of the uh, interacting components for the deployment of a service function chain. 
In summary, from the NFE orchestrator point of view, uh, in order to deploy a forwarding graph, there are just two commands required uh, to uh, deploy this forwarding graph. The first one is the attacker VNF GD create, which basically is used to onboard a template, what we uh, saw. And then there's a VNF G create command, where you just specify a name for the VNF G and use the onboarded uh, uh, forwarding graph template to go ahead and deploy a forwarding graph. So that's on the NFE orchestrator piece of the whole workflow. Now, Lewis is going to talk more on the neutron networking SFC side. Right. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, neutron networking SFC, which is currently a, a stadium project as part of Neutron. Um, so the way we model this uh, with, as an API is uh, we have a set of um, resources that are available as extensions to Neutron. And essentially what they do is allow you to uh, create what we call a, a port chain, which consists of an ordered list of uh, port pair groups and uh, uh, classifiers. So if you look at the bottom of the diagram, we actually have, we show the different instances of uh, service functions or VNFs that run from the, uh, the source to a destination. And the way we actually set up the, the service chain is that we have the, um, the uh, port pairs that actually represent the, the service functions, and each uh, port pair has an ing represents an ingress and an egress to the service function. Those are then grouped together as a port pair group, and essentially this allows you to do the load balancing across all the um, port, pairs, uh, port pairs in that uh, port pair group. Um, so there you see uh, several stages of uh, port pairs and VNFs in the service chain. And then in addition to that, we have a uh, classifier that uh, allows you to select the traffic that actually goes into the port chain. So the, uh, the port chains are a unidirectional uh, port uh, chain, rather, that uh, represent the networking forwarding path uh, that's shown in the previous diagrams. The port pairs are based on um, neutron ports. So as I said, there's ingress and an egress port. The, we group them together in port pair groups, which allows us to do scaling and load balancing across all the of similar uh, port pairs with service functions within a group. Uh, we can also do a dynamic uh, update of those port pair groups, so we can add and remove um, port pairs or service functions in the group, so that allows us to address um, incre or varying traffic loads. We can also do a dynamic update of the port chains themselves to add and remove uh, port pairs, so you can actually um, reconfigure the chain to add in or remove uh, various service functions from that chain. Uh, we also support multiple uh, classifiers, so you can actually add and remove uh, and select the traffic that you want to have going into the chain. Um, and then in addition to that, we have, uh, we have the abstract API, which is essentially the Neutron API that supports REST uh, requests. And then we have the back end that supports multiple different uh, drivers. So we can interface at the southbound to, uh, say, ODL, OVS, ODN, ODL, et cetera. Uh, so this is just briefly the resources. So this is the, the API at the northbound interface and, and it handles uh, CRUD or create and delete uh, requests to allow you to create the port chain, to update the port chain uh, and delete it and for each one of the different um, resources that are available. So we have port chain resources, port pair group resources to do the load balancing and then also uh, port pairs and the flow classifiers. Um, we have a number of uh, parameters that are associated with these uh, different resources. For example, the, um, uh, the port chain uh, parameters allow you to select, say, symmetric chains or allow you to um, select the kind of um, correlation or um, encapsulation that you're going to be using in the data plane. This is briefly the architecture. So the northbound essentially is the uh, API that we have for port chaining, and this would interface with the uh, TACA driver and uh, support the requests coming from the TACA driver, which would these, these would be to add and remove uh, port chains or any of the other resources. Sitting below that, we have the, uh, the plugin, the Neutron uh, Service Chain plugin manager, and into that manager, that common uh, service chain API, we can add uh, different drivers for back, back end um, 
implementations. And at the bottom, it sh shows you the uh, compute nodes and the actual um, chaining through, say, for example, um, an OVS switch. This is a bit more detailed. This is really looking at the data plane, and this is how IETF is defined the, the data plane. Essentially, we have the uh, service function forwarders, we have the classifiers. So service function forwarders sort of essentially implemented as uh, OVS switch, and uh, it handles the, the traffic through on, in the data plane. So uh, what happens is at the classifier, the uh, network service header is attached to the packets. Uh, that uh, network service header includes a chain ID and also a, an index to indicate which hop the, uh, the packet or the service function is through the chain. And um, you can see there, for example, um, you have a blue chain and a red chain with the IDs 1 and 7, and the 255, 254, etc., are the hop counts or the index that's decremented as you go through each service function. And essentially, uh, you know, you can see the chains there. There's uh, a couple of interesting aspects that we have to deal with is the fact that you also either have um, NSH aware um, service functions where the header is actually delivered to the service function itself, or you have to go through a proxy in the case where the service function is unaware of NSH. Um, I think um, that's probably I have, all I have for now. The, I think Brady will uh, talk to the ODL aspects. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to cover the, uh, the open daylight aspects of, of service function chaining, how it's implemented. Um, here I'm talking about what SFC is, and we've basically covered that already. So um, basically, you uh, define an abstract uh, ordered list of network services. Uh, these services are then switched together to create the chain. Um, and open daylight it, SFC is giving us the infrastructure. Uh, to, to configure this chain and create end user applications. Um, the main important uh, point in this slide is uh, this Open Daylight SFC is an implementation of the IETF SFC and NSH uh, RFCs. We have, have the links there. So what are the features uh, that we get in the Open Daylight SFC um, application? So, in the top left here, you can see currently we're integrating with uh, the Open Daylight Genius project. And what that will give us, uh, first of all, something we, we uh, call uh, application coexistence. Um, it's, we, we already have that implemented in previous releases, but with the integrating with Genius, that will improve this, this integration. What application coexistence is, um, it allows multiple applications to exist on the same open flow switch. So you can have something like SFC, uh, the classifier in our case would be netvert on the same open flow switch and the, we're coordinating the tables that get written to. And we're not stomping on each other. It's actually not a trivial thing to achieve. So, um, so we'll have an improved application coexistence. Um, this will simplify the configuration for the service function, service function forwarders. Um, dynamic service function insertion, um, load balancing, failover, all those sorts of neat uh, use cases. Um, also with, with the Open Daylight SFC, we, get, we have what's, what we call a pluggable classifier. Um, I think that's, it's pretty important to point out that it's pluggable. Ideally, uh, I would imagine that the classifier would be some sort of like a DPI or something that's kind of traffic aware that you can do some cool things there. You can, you can say, um, all right, BitTorrent, for instance, I want to put on one particular service chain, an HTTP on a different service chain, and there's no point in sending BitTorrent traffic to HTTP service functions, et cetera. So uh, we can achieve that with the, the pluggable classifiers that we have. You, the, basically, SFC, the internals of it, doesn't really need to know about the, the classifier. You can have pretty much any sort of classifier as long as it can encapsulate NSH and send the packets to our service function forwarders, then, then we, can, we can work with that. So right now, as, as I mentioned here, um, we have, uh, as classifiers, we're using Open Daylight Netvert, uh, which is basically a neutron backend. Uh, we have group-based policy uh, as a classifier, and then we have an SFC standalone classifier. Um, two other important points here, um, switch independence. As of now, we are kind of tied to OVS, but that's going to change very soon. 
Um, we're going to be able to use OVS and FIDO. Uh, FIDO is a fast data I.O. It's a new virtual switch. Uh, it's an open source project. It's also called VPP, uh, Vector Packet Processing. So uh, it's not only just OVS. Um, if you look in the OPNFV uh, project area, there's a fast data stacks project, which is basically integrating FIDO with OpenStack. And then in the, this, the current release of OPN and VSFC, we're going to integrate with this fast data stacks and be able to use uh, FIDO. So it's not just OVS. Um, and as, as you see there, we can also, we ha also have an iOS XE render. Um, then virtual infrastructure independence. There's nothing that says we have to be an open stack. I mean, currently we are only an open stack, but we could uh, use any virtual infrastructure. So here's a bit more, some detail about the, the Open Daylight SSC data model. Um, I tried to capture here, for instance, uh, the first concept, the service function chain. You have an abstract ordered list of service function types. So if you look in the blue box here, you have SF type, SF type, SF type, that should be actually be SF type one, two, and three. Whatever, you could say, I want a DPI, a firewall, and that. Then in the service function path, you get into concrete details about that service function chain. For instance, here in the second row of the, the, the light blue boxes, I mentioned concrete service functions. Um, and then also in the SFP, you would, you would uh, specify the concrete service function forwarders. Um, then you have uh, the rendered service path, which is the actual service chain. Um, it's a combination of the SFC and the SFP, but also can include dynamic runtime information if you're doing things like load balancing or failover and such. So, um, and then another important thing I mentioned here, the service chain classification. And I mentioned that in the previous slide, the pluggable classifier. But basically what you're doing in the classifier is just mapping from uh, subscriber or tenant traffic to a particular um, service chain, to a particular pre-configured uh, pre service chain. So um, we use different transports. Uh, we could use VXLAN GPE. Uh, Ethernet and PLS as transports, and then uh, what we what I call what we call the service chain encapsulation is NSH uh, is what we have implemented now. Um, so here here's a, a kind of a, a complicated use case, something that kind of shows the the power of, of SFC and where we can go with this. Um, and notice I have three different service functions here. I have a DPI, a, a quality of service, and an HTTP. It could be whatever, header enrichment or, or whatever. Um, and so, so I used to work in DPI. And, and they, you know, the biggest push in DPI is to make it faster. And that, well, I always said that the easiest way to make DPI faster is don't do DPI. And here's how you can, how you can achieve that. So you could initially map all of your tenant traffic to the green, uh, the green service chain there, which would go through your DPI, right? Then um, it would go through the DPI until it's able to figure out what, what type of traffic it is. Let's say either P, uh, BitTorrent or HTTP. Once it determines the type of traffic that it is, it can send feedback into uh, SFC. I call it, here I call it reclassification. Um, I was scolded earlier by, a, there's an IETF author out here. It's not actually reclassification, but kind of a mix of reclassification. Uh, reclassification is where the, the actual service function would be changing it on the fly and then sending information to service function forwarder. But this is a different way of looking at reclassification. You're sending feedback uh, back to SFC, which then would feed back into the classifier. So once I determine that uh, the traffic, for instance, is peer-to-peer -peer for that particular five tuple, for instance, that flow, I could send the feedback to the classifier and tell him, okay, he's no longer on the green chain, now send him to the blue chain. And then uh, likewise with, with HTTP. So I think that's a pretty powerful use case uh, that we can achieve with, with SFC. Um, yeah, so now uh, some future improvements. I mean, this is actually really cool that, I mean, what we can do here with, 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 uh, with Attacker VNF Manager and, and with OpenStack, integrating that with Open Daylight. Um, but there's some things that we need to take care of in the future. And I, I have well, kind of a long list here, but uh, it, it all boils down to the fact that um, we're starting with a, a feature-rich um, API, which is the VNF forwarding graphs. 
um, which then the attacker comes down into, I, lots of times I call it like a funnel, comes down into um, networking SFC, which is a bit still uh, getting started, but it has less information available. So from VNF forwarding graph down to networking FCC, you're losing some information there. It doesn't, all the information doesn't map directly. Then on the other end, you're, you're coming back to open daylight FCC. And there are certain fields there that we're not sure exactly how to fill out. So these are some future improvements we have to take care of. For instance, how do you specify the, the transport? Uh, is it Ethernet plus NSH or VXLAN, GPE plus NSH, et cetera? And there's another, a list here of different things that we need to be able to specify. How to specify, a, and I call it an SFC proxy, an NSH proxy. How do we expose the render service paths, uh, load balancing and such. Um, it's important though that, I mean, we are, the different communities are working together on this and there's a, is it Thursday or Friday? It's Friday. We, we have a meeting where we're going to get together and say, okay, these gaps have been identified. Um, we all, we're all on the same page. I mean, this is the goal, but there's some, some gaps have been identified and, and work together to, to, to... Yeah, to add to that, there's a uh, meeting on Thursday to, for next steps in the networking SFC. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, okay, uh, that's all I have. Um, should we open up for questions now or after the demo? I think we should do the demo. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Yeah. So this is the setup we have for uh, uh, running this demo. So we have like a simple client VM and a server VM. The server is uh, uh, as a simple HTTP server listening on port 80, and the client can, uh, here the client and server are connected directly, and the client can talk to the server and send some GET requests. And uh, once we have the, uh, these two are already created, the VMs, and now we will try to uh, create a VNF, a simple VNF, uh, which acts as a forwarder between the client and the uh, server. And then we use this VNF to deploy a service function chain between the source and destination. And we can see how the packets are forwarded uh, at, uh, on the VNF as a forwarder, and then finally it reaches the destination. So we'll just run the noLS command. So we already have created the client and uh, server VMs here. So they are just basic, uh, simple, uh, bare, uh, or bare metal uh, running the client and server instances. And now let's go ahead and uh, here we have the uh, VNFD catalog list uh, containing a simple uh, VNF. Uh, we, we will now go ahead and use this uh, VNF descriptor to create a VNF, which is basically a simple uh, uh, instance again uh, connected to a network. Here we have all the three instances running. One is a client, the server, and the actual VDU instance. The VNF just contained one VDU. So that is spawned here in the uh, NOVA, and we can see all the three instances running here. And uh, let's go ahead and access the console of all the three instances now. Um, and try to uh, see uh, if we can uh, reach from the client to the server first. So here on the server, we are simply running a, a simple HTTP server listening on port 80 on the server side. And then on the client, uh, we will try to do a curl get request onto the uh, server. We should be able to receive the connection back from the server. And if we go back to the server itself, uh, we are seeing that the get request from the client uh, was received in the server itself. Now this is the, uh, here the client and server are directly talking to each other, then there's no forwarding graph yet. And now let's access the VNF console, which we have just created. Uh, here we'll just run a simple VXLAN tool, which acts like a forwarder, uh, listen to the incoming traffic, dumps it on the console, and also forwards, forward, forwards it back to the egress port. So we have the tool running here and basically to listen for the packets and dump it here on the terminal at any time it receives any packets and then forwards it back onto the egress. So now we have all the three uh, VMs in place. Let's go ahead and now uh, create a forwarding graph descriptor like uh, uh, as a Tosca template. Here we can see the Tosca template for the forwarding graph. So the two main components as we already discussed here, the first one is the groups. Uh, the group contains the forwarding graph me metadata information and then it also contains the important piece, the forwarding path one which is the uh, which is the only member here as part of the forwarding graph. It's a simple setup here what we have. 
So when we look into the forwarding path one information itself, we have the main policy uh, section here, which contains the criteria and the uh, path uh, information. The criteria basically tells on what uh, kind of traffic uh, the for forwarding graph needs to be acted upon and uh, steered either to the VNF that is chained between the source and the destination. Here in the criteria section, we are putting in some parameters, the source port range, the destination port range, and the, uh, some other parameters like IP destination prefix and so on. And uh, in the past section, we have the forwarder and capability information. Here we have a single VNF running, which has exposed the CP12 as the uh, connecting port uh, for the forwarding graph and to create the chain. So now once we have uh, provided these requirements as uh, SFC policies in the Tosca template. Uh, we can go ahead and onboard this uh, template uh, using the tacker VNFG create command. This will allow us to onboard this created template into the tacker NFE, NFE orchestrator. So here we see that the uh, template has been onboarded successfully. And now we can go ahead and use this uh, onboarded a forwarding graph template to deploy the actual forwarding graph. So we use the VNFG create command here and provide the uh, onboarded template as an input and give a name for the forwarding graph. And here we are uh, running the command VNFG create to deploy the forwarding graph and we can see that the uh, forwarding graph has, has been initiated from the tacker side. So what happens in the background is the tacker uh, validates the template as we already saw it, uh, finds all the information necessary to uh, provide the port information to the networking SFC, like uh, validate the abstract VNF types, find the actual VNF instances that are running, and then find the port information for the, uh, for the capability and the forwarded information we have specified in the template. And once this information is, uh, uh, is fetched, it would create a DB entry to uh, perform further lifecycle manage uh, management of the forwarding graph and then forwards this request uh, to the networking SFC and calls the underlying uh, uh, neutron commands such as a port pairs, a port pair groups and the SFC creation. Now once the forwarding graph is initiated from the attacker side, we can uh, now go into the client terminal and see if uh, the packets are now getting forwarded uh, through the VNF and the client, uh, client tries to send some traffic to the server. So let's go ahead and initiate the curl command again from the client. So we see that the connection was received and we also uh, see in the server side that the get request from the client was received. And now in the VNF console itself, we are able to see that the packets have now been uh, uh, forwarded to the, have been received at the VNF. And then we see that the, we are basically seeing that the tack, uh, packets are getting dumped onto the terminal here. But then these packets are received and just forwarded back onto the egress. So we now know that the VNF actually has been created as part of the chain. And, uh, and it is now receiving packets and forwarding back onto the egress. So now let's try to uh, create, uh, send more requests from the client um, and see if the packet count increased on the console here in the VNF itself. So if I do a curl request again from the client to the server, we see that the packet count has now increased. Like you see the packet index has gone up to 10 now. So we see, uh, we can, this way we can see that the packets are just forwarded uh, from uh, the client to the uh, VNF itself based on some of the classification requirements we provided, like the destination port range and the destination IP, uh, IP subnet. Uh, with this information, the traffic was steered into this VNF and uh, it was, uh, it was able to forward the packets to the server itself. Now this was, uh, we saw now the, how the VNFG could uh, create command could be used to deploy a forwarding graph in one single command. Now when we go ahead and delete this forwarding graph, the system should be set or it should be reset back to its initial state and all the open flow rules should be deleted and the client and server should be able to talk to each other directly which was the initial state of the system. Now let's go ahead and run the attacker VNFG uh, D delete command. What this basically does is uh, uh, provide all the necessary lower layer calls to delete the service function chain, to delete the classifier functions and to delete all the open flow rules that were created across all these three machines. Now let's try to uh, send a request again from the client to the server and we should not be able to, uh, we should not be seeing any packets now flowing through the VNF and the connection should be uh, directly hitting the server. 
we see that there are no packets here uh, that are received on the VNF, and the client and the server were able to talk to each other directly. And uh, that's a wrap on the demo. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions. You want to? Or, yeah. I've skipped the summary, summary. you're right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Summary right. the questions. Go ahead. So just to wrap this uh, session, like some of the takeaways we want to provide for everyone is that deploying complex forwarding graphs with a simple, easy to read uh, Tosca template, uh, using Tacker as an NFU orchestrator, uh, with just the two commands, we can now do it. And uh, and again, when the user initiates a SFC request, the user themselves, the user need not worry about what is the backend driver that is used to actually uh, create this SFC. Here, it can the networking SFC itself can handle multiple backend drivers like ODL, as we saw here, the OVS, and there are other backend drivers that are getting integrated into networking SFC. And finally, uh, the forwarding graph descriptor itself, what we uh, saw, is based on the Tosca NFE profile. This is based on the open standards, which is accepted by the NFE community. And uh, this will help us to evolve this forwarding graph uh, further in future iterations. Thank you. And take some questions. Go ahead. Is there a microphone? Anyone? Do we have a microphone? Hello? Oh. Yes. <laughs> nice presentation, guys. Um, small question. In the Tosca YAML tem template and in the um, SFC APIs, there's a, there's a discon discontinuity about how you talk about things. Is there any work to try and make it similar? So if I'm building a, building a Tosca template, are you talking about port pairs or port chains or vice versa? It's, it seems a little incongruous. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think we've, we're certainly going to start looking at uh, trying to resolve those differences uh, in uh, future versions of the port chain. So like I say, there's going to be a, a meeting on Thursday at, I think it's 11 o'clock, where we're going to be talking about uh, future directions for networking SFC, and that's probably part of the uh, discussion. Uh, okay, uh, I have a question about the, uh, okay, you talked about the classifier. And you said it, uh, in a commercial deployment, uh, it might be a DPI box. Uh, and in my organization, uh, we are doing currently an assessment how, how to utilize the uh, service function chaining. But we found that most of the vendors, like uh, doing the DPI or doing the gateways, um, the, uh, they are not yet ready for the NSH. Mm -hmm. So how do you comment on that? Who, who, is, who is cooperating with you? Yeah, that, that's, that's an excellent question. I mean, that's the main problem. You know, OBS uh, does not support NSH yet. And um, yeah, lots of uh, operators aren't supporting it yet either. Um, that's one of the main reasons we decided to start using FIDO, uh, the FIDO VPP, which already does uh, have NSH implemented. So yeah, I mean, it's it's, it is something that, I mean, it's new, it's leading edge. I wouldn't call it bleeding edge, but um, the thing is, if you don't implement NSH, uh, you have to think, ask yourself, how are, how are we going to do service chaining without NSH? I mean, you can do it. Uh, you're just going to have to classify it every hop. And depending on how many tenants or subscribers you have, that's not going to uh, scale very well. I mean, you will have to classify it every hop, every time you come into the SFF, every time you come back from a service function, et cetera. If you don't have some sort of uh, what we call service chain encapsulation, you're going to have to classify everywhere, and that gets expensive real quick. So um, that's a trade-off. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think it was you know, that, uh, that uh, proxy that we, we saw there yeah. is really the device that's going to deal with any legacy um, service functions that don't understand NSH. So um, hopefully over time we're going to see uh, NSH implemented by service functions. So the need for those proxies with the you know, reclassification at each hop is going to go away. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, just one comment and one question. Because 
Normally we do, we do the classification. Uh, I'm coming from a uh, telco background, so uh, for mobile broadband, uh, users have different services or different packages. So classification is not done based on the IP or port. It's based on the subscriber or subscription profile. Yeah. So how can we map this into reality? I mean, uh, yeah, also ideally, I think I mentioned the slide, but I didn't uh, explicitly say it. I mean, it, another way to do it is, is you can have um, you can have PCRF interface, which you're referring to, right? I mean, the, the subscriber awareness is, is what you get with your PCRF, your policy uh, control routing function. So um, that, that's one way to do it. Yeah. More questions, please. Go ahead. Over here. Hello? Yes. Yeah, so great presentation. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, some of the slides seem to show the v directly from network FSB and some from ODL. Do you support both methods? And if you do, do you characterize the advantages or disadvantages between the two approaches? I didn't, I didn't understand the question. You were cutting out a lot. So the control of the V-switch, OVS V-switch. Yes. Uh, some of the slides seem to show they were controlled via ODL, and some seem to show they were being controlled by networking at SFC directly. Right. Without the without the ODL, so do you support both paths, and what are the advantages and disadvantages if you support both? I think in a in a typical deployment, you would only be supporting one one method. So you'd you know likely maybe just go through uh, an SDN controller to control all the devices in the network. Uh, maybe in a, dif a different deployment, you might go directly to um, uh, switches controlled by um, directly from the networking SFC to the OVS switches. So I think it really depends on each deployment. So, you know, it, um, and what the carrier has in mind for their uh, SDN controllers, usage of SDN controllers. The, uh, yeah, he, he also asked the, the, the pros and cons. Uh, as I understand, maybe the networking SSC driver, uh, it's more of an API driven and it's not as much implementation. Right. right? I mean, so, so it's, it is indeed tended to have some sort of an SDN controller backend. Right, right. right. Yeah, so the, the, the reason we have the that OVS, uh, we focused initially on the OVS uh, back end is that it's, it's needed as a reference implementation within OpenStack. So that doesn't mandate that you have to have uh, an OVS, OVS driver. You could just as easily use um, some other back end driver, say an ONUS controller or an ODL controller. That, that's perfectly uh, feasible. Yeah, I think, I think it's just one. Uh, driver at any point of time that is controlling the whole workflow uh, and it's not like uh, networking SFC controlling some component and the ODL co controlling some of the OVS uh, related actions. So it's, if we have the ODL as a backend driver, it's ODL that's going to manage all of these classifier functions and the actual service function chain that gets deployed on all these nodes. There's a question here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. I know we're in the age of uh, abstractions, but um, this whole technology is, is made to improve and, and, and give us the ability to handle complex networking, new networking uh, services, etc. And this whole uh, abstraction layer where, where uh, Tacker is talking to, to uh, what was it called, SFC networking and so on, mm -hmm means that we're hiding the functionalities that are available in ODL, OBS, ONOS, etc. And essentially, I'm afraid, it will dumb down, meaning that, that you know, the differences between ODL, OBS, ONOS, and so on will, will disappear. Um, what is the reason? Well, I can sort of understand the reason, but I still find it a bit strange that Tacker isn't talking directly to ODL and then exposing all the capabilities. Is there, yeah, that's so, my question or whatever. Yeah, I agree that there is an issue there with not being able to expose all the functionality, but on the, on the other side of that is the issue of why do you want to expose all the uh, feature specific, you know, uh, controller specific features up to TACO. So you have to decide, you know, what you want to do there. 
So we are aware of the capabilities that are provided by Open Daylight or any other backend driver. So for us, from the attacker side, it's how we expose these capabilities to the user in the template itself. So right now, since Tacker is going through the Neutron, the networking SFC interface, which is still evolving, uh, the capabilities what you can provide or the requirements what you can provide in the template itself is very constrained. But going forward, when the networking SFC evolves to support more capabilities and to interact with more backends, which has all the potentials of supporting com complex requirements, that's when Tacker can also, uh, in uh, coordination, translate, uh, get this request handled in the Tosca template and push down those requests to the uh, downstream networking SFC uh, to handle it in the lower layers. So for, from Tacker side, it should not uh, limit us from exposing any of those capabilities that are provided by the backend. So we are aware of those capabilities that ODL or any other backend provides, but uh, it's up to how we can translate and provide it to the networking SFC itself, because networking SFC is a interface between Tacker and Open Daylight, given that it provides the neutron abstracts in OpenStack. Yeah, I, I would like to mention, though, I mean, if you take a look at the OpenAV SFC project today, Tacker is indeed talking separately to Open Daylight and to, uh, to OpenStack, um, and it's working quite well. Um, th there, there are other projects that we're considering uh, for OP and SFC. I don't know if we'll be able to get to it in the D-release now or in the E-release, which is OpenO. And OpenO is, is, uh, is an orchestrator, which I consider more of a complete orchestrator. And it talks separately uh, to Tacker as a VNF manager to spin up VMs and such, and then to, uh, it can have several different uh, SDN controller backends. That's another possibility. Um, and then you would have a little driver per, per SDN controller backend. That, depending on how you look at it, sorry, it seems to make, make a bit more sense to me to, to go with something like, like OpenO, where you'd have that division. Yeah. Any other questions? More questions, please. Yeah. OK. I think we thank can you. wrap this session right, here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.